Hello, once again, and welcome back to my channel. Is a Yoko Amlin A. Once again, I'm live on my channel to answer all of your questions. And um, if you have any questions right now, you, you can ask me. So there's a question that people always ask me, and it is about content that they can watch, like TV series and all this stuff. People always ask me, what is the best series? What is the best movie? Of course, this is hard for me to answer because what's best for me can be boring for you. So I guess this is something that you should search for on your own. Um, but um, anyway, what I want you to know is that on YouTube, you can find complete TV series with full episodes and everything, okay? Hey, could you please continue making videos? I want to learn speak Egyptian so much. Yes, yes, I will make, I will keep making videos. Yes, mean. So what I wanted you to know is that on YouTube, you can, uh, you can find the whole series with full episodes. But I don't think you can find everything with subtitles. So I think those, those uh, series can be really good if you are intermediate or advanced. They will be so good for you. But to find series with subtitles, with English subtitles, I don't think that's easy to find. But you can find many, many videos with English subtitles, like, for example, um, interviews with actors, or just simple like short videos, but the whole series with subtitles, I think that is too much work. And maybe the people who make those TV series, they don't really think that they need to do that because they know that these shows are made for Arabic speakers. Okay. So right now I have my YouTube open on my phone and I'm looking through your comments to see your questions. And I do get many, many questions. Um, <clears throat> I do answer them in the comments, but some of those questions are really good. And I think that everybody can benefit from answering, from me answering those questions. Okay, so uh, I'm just looking through. And, uh, hmm. Okay, okay, so... Someone asked me, what is the difference between, like, why do we sometimes pronounce te marbuta as te and sometimes we don't? Uh, let me explain the question further. So, hi. So, if you're, if you look at this word, gazma, which means uh, shoes, okay. If you see there's te marbuta, if you look in the comments or in the live chats, you can see it's a circle at the end with two dots. This is called te marbuta. Marbuta means tied into a knot. So te marbuta. But when we're speaking, we don't say gazmat. No, we say gazma by itself. But if we want to say this is the shoe of someone or something, we have to say the T now. Now, this T represents possession, okay? Explain present and the present continuous. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So, gazma and gazmit, okay? So, if I want to say, for example, Mimo's shoes, I would say gazmit Mimo. So, if you look, if you look in the chat, I'm writing everything I say. Gazma and gazmit, they are both the same spelling, but by itself, it's just gazma. But when you say the shoe of someone, you say gazmit and then the person. Okay, let me give you another example. Uh, the word for car is arabiya. Arabiya. And then you would say someone's car, Arabiyat Mimo, for example, Arabiyat Mimo. So when it belongs to someone, you have to pronounce the T at the end of the noun. And this is only for 
feminine words that end with ta marbuta or words that end with ta marbuta. If the noun is masculine, then there's nothing. You don't do anything. For example, kitab. Kitab means book. And you want to say Mimo's book, you would say kitab. Kitab. Mimo. Nothing changed. You just said book and then you said the person right after each other. And that means Mimo's book. Could you please conjugate the present and past? The verb to answer. Zikra isn't, you mean memory as remembering, remembering someone? Uh, is Mukhalif an insult? <laughs> yes. Um, okay, let me answer them in order so that I don't forget anybody. Um, <clears throat> so explain the present and the present continuous. Okay, so the present. Let, let me let me make it more similar to English. Okay, so in English we have something called the present simple, which is, for example, I play football. And this refers to a fact, it refers to a habit. Okay, so in Arabic, in Egyptian Arabic to be more specific, we have this same tense. We say ana, and then a verb which starts with bi, and then the object. So ana balab kora. And this can mean I play football, just like in English in the simple, which is a fact or a habit. Okay, so the continuous, the present continuous in English is something that is happening right now. We use ing. So I am playing football, and this means right now. Um, in Arabic, we don't really have this, okay? It's in Arabic, we only have one present tense, and it can represent facts or habits or something happening now. Okay, it depends on context. However, there are some verbs that have a form for the pre for the simple and a form for the continuous. Let me give you an example. Ana bemshi kulliyum. This means I walk every day. Ana bemshi kulliyum starts with bih, just like I told you the verb. Ana bemshi kulliyum. I walk every day. But if you're walking right now, you would say, Ana meshi. Ana meshi. This means I am walking right now. So now it's a different form. This different form exists for all the verbs. It exists, some of them. Okay. And also, it can be treated as an adjective because it's describing your current state. All right. So how can you know if this, whether this verb has it or not? You just have to remember. You have to know. With your experience with the language, you will know and you will remember them. Could you please conjugate in present and past the verb to answer? Rud, yeah. Rud. Okay, so to answer someone means rud, rud, rud. And uh, ana, I answer, ana barud. Inta bit rud. So it's just rud and then add the beginnings and endings. Ana barud, inta bit rud, inti bit ruddi, intu bit ruddu, huwa bi rud, hiya bit rud, ihna bin rud, humma bi ruddu. And then the past tense, rud. So rud is the present, rud is the past. Ana radit. We add t at the end. I answered. Inta radit. The same. Inti radditi. Intu radditu. Huwa rad. Hiya radit. Ihna radina. Humma raddu. So conjugations is mutakhallif an insult? Yes, it is. <laughs> well, 
the official meaning or the correct dictionary meaning for mutakhallif means that you missed your appointment. You didn't attend uh, something you were supposed to attend. It means you're absent. You're not there. But we use it to say retarded. It's also actually the same meaning when you're saying, for example, like your brain is not there, so you're retarded, you're absent, so you're stupid. You, what, what you said made no difference, as if you're absent. So mutakhallif me is an insult in Egypt. Uh, zikrat Ahmad means memory of Ahmad, because zikra is memory. Uh, you mean zakira, which means your memory, the ability to remember. It's zakira. Zakirat Ahmad. Yes, zakira by itself. Zakir Ahmad. Mia. To answer present and past. Oh. Good. So, as I was saying, um, the word, when it ends with ta'marbuta, by itself, we don't say t, but when you want it to be the possession possession of someone, you say t. Kubayit mimo. Kubaya means cup, and then by itself. But if you want to say mimo's cup, you say kubayit mimo. Is there another verb for to answer like gawib? Yeah, gawib is uh, is used when you're answering a question. Rud is used when you're answering the phone or when someone speaks to you and you, he wants you to respond to them, which is rud. Uh, gawib is for questions usually. Uh, so ana bagawib. It's very simple. You just get the verb, the source. And then you put bi right before in conjugation for. Can you write cup? Yeah, sure. Kubbe, yeah. Kubbe, yeah. Kubbe, yeah. Cup. Kubbe, yeah. It sounds like cup, but we add some like. Kub, cup, kub, kub, and then a, yeah, which is one. Kubbaya. And the plural is uh, kubbayat. Kubbayat. It's the same, but you add alif te. Kubbayat. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I want to look at some of your questions also again on my phone. Okay, this is a very common question. People always ask me uh, what they should learn first. Should they learn standard Arabic and then choose a dialect? Or should they learn a dialect right away? So my answer to this is it depends on you. Why are you learning? the language? Are you trying to be a translator? Are you trying to work at an embassy? Do you want to do some like diplomatic work in, in Arab countries? So if you're going to do something professional, a job, of course, you need to learn standard because everything is written in standard documents, contracts, you name it. Everything is in standard in the literary wor world. But if you, for example, you're going to get married, you have family members from Egypt and your Egypt and your English is your Arabic isn't that good. You're trying to communicate. So it involves speaking to people outside of work. Then I recommend you just go and learn the dialect right away. But if you have both, start with standard and then move on to a dialect. Can you conjugate in present and past? Yeah, I know the rule, but... 
بتجاوب انت بتجاوب انتو بتجاوبوا انتي بتجاوبي هو بيجاوب هي بتجاوب احنا بنجاوب هما بيجاوبوا انا جاوبت انت جاوبت آه, انتي جاوبتي انتو جاوبتو آه, هو جاوب هي جاوبت احنا جاوبنا هما جاوبوا this was the conjugation for uh, answer okay so here I have another question or maybe it's more of a complaint <laughs> so people say for example when I watch a movie I don't understand a lot of words and uh, it's very difficult to understand and all that stuff well that's because your your level is still isn't your level still isn't high enough and also when you're watching a movie you aren't supposed to understand much because in movies they speak very quickly they're trying to be funny they say these like really difficult uh, like phrases and stuff um i would be happy if you'd done that if i did what exactly and then uh, people complain and uh, they say, we don't understand much. So there is something, there's a way, there's a technique that you should do when you're watching a movie or listening to something. And this technique is you have a target. What does that mean? You have, for example, you've learned today five new words. Okay, you've learned the words Let's say the pronouns. You're a complete beginner, and you've learned the pronouns. I, uh, you, he, she, it, we, they. And you've learned the numbers until 10, 1 to 10. Okay? What you want to do is try to find and hear those words in those videos. Okay? So now you're listening, and then you hear Anna. Yes, I heard the word. And if you can try to extract the whole sentence okay so you for example you know i and you know the verb eat for example and then you hear the person in the video or the movie saying i eat blah 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 whatever you try to take the whole sentence and you will remember it because you found it in a movie so now you know the words you heard them you confirmed what you know and you learned a new word you learned a whole sentence so you have a target you learn some words and you go and try to find them. You go and try to hear those words in that video, okay? You should always have a target. And don't go watching a whole movie and expect to understand much. It's Of course, you won't understand. And by the way, speaking to someone in person is so much easier than listening to, to songs and watching movies, okay? Speaking to someone in person, you can read their body language, there is context, the surroundings will help you, you can point to things, okay? So it's always easier. Uh, but watching a couple of native speakers speaking to each other very quickly in a movie, that can be quite difficult, okay? So this is what you do. Find something to focus on. Focus on a word, on a phrase, on something, okay? And pronouns and numbers and days of the week and all that stuff is so common. You're going to hear it all everywhere. So try to hear the word, extract the sentence. This is what I do. This is what I do when I learn a language. And I really love it. I would be happy if you'd done that. Uh, please translate it. Ana hakun mabsut. Mabsut. Ana hakun mabsut. Awi. لو انت عملت كده. So in uh, in Egyptian Arabic, the word for wood, which is used, you know, for the imaginary, we don't we don't have it. We say will. Okay, so I will be happy if you did that. Okay, we don't have wood. And a ha kun ha kun means will be. Kun means will be, and ha. Is the future so I will be hakun mopsut happy awi very we say very we say we describe after not before so 
مبسوط, happy. And then أوي means very. No, we don't say very first like in English. أنا هكون مبسوط أوي لو, لو means if, أنت means you, عملت means did, and كده means like this. Uh, I would be happy. Okay, done. That's a good advice, Mimo, when watching movies. I do that. Yeah. Oh, it's Mike. <laughs> One of my students. How to say, I think that your friend killed the dog. <laughs> what? I think that Cairo is a beautiful city. I think that you should study more and work less. Hmm. I think that we say, I see. Okay. I'm translating. I see. So we say, Anna, Shayif. Your friend killed the dog. And a shave in in means that. And a shave in your friend Sahbak Atal Il Kalb. So we literally say I see or I am seeing. Shayif means right now. If you've seen from the beginning, if you've been watching from the beginning, I said we have two forms, the present and the continuous. Bashuf means I see every day or a fact or a habit. Ana bashuf film kulliyum. I watch a movie every day. Ana shayif. This means I see right now. Okay. So what you see is what you think in, in Arabic. So ana shayif. It's like when you're speaking English and someone says something and then you say, ah, I see. Okay, it doesn't mean that you see with your eyes. It means you you understand, you get it, you think. Okay, you're thinking about it, you get it. So, I see. Ana shayif. This means I think that. In that. Ana shayif. In. Sahbak. Sahib means friend. And ak at the end means your for male. Sahbak. Atal. Atal means killed. In the past tense, il kalb. Il kalb means the dog. Very simple. I think that Cairo is a beautiful city. And a shayif in Il Mohira Madi Gamila. And a shayif. Same thing. In Il Kohira Medina Gamila. And if you've noticed, I said Medina first, which means city, and then Gamila, which means beautiful. And I said ha huh, at the end because Medina is feminine. So feminine, feminine. I think that you should study more and work less. Anashayif. Innak. Anashayif. Innak. Lazim. Tizakir. Akhtar. Wetishtagal. Aal. And a shayf in neck in is means that in neck means that you okay you it's ek it's these endings that I talk about all the time in neck lazim lazim means must or should tizakir oh there is alif missing tizakir I made a mistake in writing tizakir means to study akhtar. And here we use the second verb conjugation because lazim is the first verb, tzekir is the second. And um, akhtar means more, wetishtagal means to work, al less. Okay. Um, what's. Okay, answer the questions. What's the difference between dilwati and dilwat? I've. It's okay. We we can have slightly different pronunciations for the same word, like ayawiz, ayiz, and duwati, duwat. It doesn't matter. It's all the same word. Can you use kawi and giddan just the same? Yeah. Can you use either one whenever you want? Or is there a rule for using one versus the other? No. <laughs> There's no rule. You, you can say... Uh, kibir giddan, kibir awi. It's the, it's the same. There's no difference. 
uh, I didn't understand أنا مشغل المروحة in this context apologies مشغل yeah مشغل you wrote it first the, the first one is correct أنا مشغل المروحة this means I this 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 fan is working right yes and did it work by itself no i made it work so ana mishaghal al marwaha this means i made the fan work it's working because i did something to it okay so ana mishaghal al marwaha for example uh I can say, I can use the same form, same verb form. I can say, for example, Anna mekabbar il sura. Anna mekabbar il sura. This means I made the picture bigger. Kibir mekabbar. Anna mekabbar mekabbar il sura. Il sura means the picture. Anna, I. Mekabbar. Mekabbar means made it bigger. So mishagal comes from the word shogli shagal, work. So, I made the fan work. Okay. Salam ya ustaz al aziz. We, uh, salam. We don't say salam as a greeting, we say it as a goodbye. Okay. So you can say ahlam wa sahlan, salam alaikum. Many things. Salam alaikum in Indonesia. Alaikum salam. Thank you. You're the best. You're welcome. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's go back to the questions. Um, so I said people were complaining about the movies, and I told you what to do with movies. Okay. And people always ask me to translate things for them. Mm. I take it, I take or I took a picture. Like, can I take a picture? What is the verb? You mean with your phone? With your phone? It's from the word picture also. Ana sawart. Ana sawart. Sawart. Surah. Or you can say I took. I you can actually actually say that. Ana khat, ana khat This means you can. It, this this means you either took the picture with your phone or you actually took it from something like from the computer. How to say? Bring me a towel and a soap. <laughs> Give me your hand. Let's cross the road. Bring me means gib, gib. It's like give. <clears throat> like in German, gib mir, gib. So, gib li, gib li, for me, il futa. Gib li il futa. Gib li. Bring me a towel and a soap. We sabuna. Sabuna means soap. We means and. Give me your hand. Idini. This means... <laughs> Idini, there's no lam. Idini, idini idak. Id, idak. Let's cross the road. Yalla, yalla, naadi, ishara. Idini idak, yalla naadi ishara. Give me your hand. Let's cross the road or the street. The letter Kaf is only pronounced different when saying Al Qahira. <laughs> Not just Al Qahira. It, uh, there are some words where we say Kaf and some words where we don't. It depends on the word. There's no rule. I think we just, it's random, very random. Um, okay. Can I also use Yazun for I think? Hmm. Hawabizun in blah blah blah. You can. When I say azun, this means I 
think, but I'm not really sure. Like, uh, like when you say anashay, if this means I, I, this is like you're giving your opinion that you're confident about. But if you want to say azun yani, uh, this means I, I, I think so, but I'm not really sure. Okay, so it's weaker. I think it's weaker than shayif. Okay. So, Besim, you can say azun, but it means it's it, the meaning is weaker than I think, like the and the shayf. What is the difference between ghibli and iddini? Ghibli means gib means bring, bring something. Iddini means give me. Okay, so bring from somewhere. And give me means maybe he has it in his hand and you're like, give me, give me, iddini. Uh, depends on the context. Hmm? What? No, no, it doesn't depend on the context. The, the meanings are different, a little different. Can I, can you use inshallah when you speak by English language? Uh, sure, why not? <laughs> if you're speaking to someone who is familiar, who's familiar with what it means, then yeah. I don't is Zayak Yabesh. Quite, Alhamdulillah. What a key. And I is a talim in Logal Masraya. Nash. Yes. And I is a talim. And I is a talim. Ah, girl or girl? I don't know. I see. Author. Sometimes people ask me questions. This is so funny. Sometimes people ask me questions and I look at their names and I'm not sure whether it's a boy or a girl. And I don't know how to speak to them, especially when it's in Arabic, because when I'm speaking to a girl, it's different than a man. So I just, <laughs> I just speak to them in English. And uh, I don't like to do that, especially when someone sends me their question in Arabic. I, I like to speak to them in Arabic also, to like to give them the experience to practice and all that stuff. But sometimes I'm forced because I don't know if I'm, whether I'm speaking to a guy or a girl. And this can be kind of insulting if you speak to a guy as a girl. It's kind of annoying to the guy, which is also sometimes funny. It's like an inside joke between friends. And uh, yeah. Some people ask me how to learn Egyptian Arabic. Just like any other language you know, it's the same thing. Listen, practice new words, get in there. Surround yourself with the language. And I is barf ismak. Hal mumkin bin tarraf ala ismak al sharif. You want to know my name? Okay, it's not a secret. My name is Mahmoud. Mahmoud. This is my name. It's my real name. Mimo is my nickname. I've always had this nickname since I was young because uh, people who don't speak Arabic always mispronounce my name. And for me, it was kind of annoying. So uh, the, the nickname Mimo came up, which is easy for everybody. Ashat um, al Allah How to say, I take the bus. I get on the bus. Bus. I take the train. I get in the train. Get off the train. Okay. So I take the bus. It's just translated. And I take the bus. I get off the bus. Ah, we say I take the bus, I get on the bus. So we say Anabarkab. Anabarkab el Utubis. This means I get on the bus, and it also means I take the bus. I get off the bus and a benzil. Min il utubis. This actually means going down, like when you say going down the stairs. And abenzil ala salalim, it's also the same for get off the bus. And abenzil min al utubis. Um, and then the train is the same. And abarka bil atr. And abdakhil al atr, I'm going in. And abdakhil il atr. It's it's you just say anadakhil. This means I'm entering. 
I get in, I get out of the train. And uh, you can say an abenzil also, which means I'm going down, out. An abenzil, benzil min il otr. You can say an abakhrug, I'm coming out. An abakhrug min il otr. I just want to make sure that I haven't missed any questions. If I want to say I don't know, should I say marafsh or mabarafsh? Okay. Now, that's a really good question that I always get. <laughs> okay. So, there is a difference between marafsh and mabarafsh. Marafsh means I don't know. Mabarafsh means I don't know how to do. Okay? Because if you can do something, this means you know, right? You know, you know the how, okay? But if you don't know the how, then you can't do it. So it's basically the same verb, but it's a different uh, conjugation or form. So the same verb for no. So when you say mabarafsh or baraf, this is the affirmative, mabarafsh is the negative. So baraf means I can do something or I know how to do, okay? Um, but if you say, عارف, this means I know. So when someone says, for example, uh, don't forget to do one, two, three, four, you say, أنا عارف, I know, I already know, أنا عارف. Okay, so that's the difference. Um, how fast someone can learn Lahga Masraya, like being interme intermediate? Hmm, it depends, it depends. But maybe, just like any normal language, Ahmed, like six, to, uh, six months to a year, you can be good, really good, with a, with, <laughs> with a lot of hard work, okay? You have to practice every day. In any language, not just Egyptian Arabic. How? How translate? I think so because you don't tell me your opinion about it. Don't be so close, person. <laughs> it's a long sentence. Oksana, mm. I'm assuming you're a girl. Okay. Yes, you're a girl. So I think so because this means Anna Shaifa Kida Ashan. You don't tell me your opinion. Inta mish bit uli your opinion yuck about it anha and I don't know what it is so it's either feminine masculine I don't know I'm gonna make it feminine for the sake of this translation no context of course don't be so closed person hmm hmm <laughs> how can I say this okay uh matib Ash Matib Ash Matib Ash Matful La La Matib Ash If That's funny. Uh, yeah. So the word if means a lock, like the one on the door. So don't be a lock. <laughs> Do people in Egypt call you Mimo or Mahmoud? Uh, Mahmoud, of course. And many other like funny nicknames. Bitaraf Ali? Anamaraf. Sah? No. When you know, we don't say we don't say b. We say ta'raf. Ta'raf. Ta'raf Ali? La Marafush. Maraf. أنا بتي يا واد اسمي عائشة إيش ااا فاني the the YouTube name doesn't doesn't show me clearly حمودي yeah um yeah Okay, and then people always ask me, like, how fast can I learn? How long does it take? It depends on you. You should tell me how long it takes you to learn because everybody's different, you know? And of course, 
when you're still starting at first, it's super slow. Your ears block everything. Your brain doesn't want to take in any new language. So it takes a while for your ears to get used to the language and your brain to adjust and all that stuff. So the, maybe the first month, it's super slow, and then it starts to speed up. How to say, I saw a girl talking to my neighbor about politics. I saw a woman talking to your neighbor about animals. Ugh. I saw a girl talking to my neighbor. What What girl? Okay. And I saw a girl Gori an il siesa. And I shoved, I saw, bint, a girl, any girl, bit kalim, talking to, gori, my neighbor, gor, neighbor, my is e at the end, gori, an is siesa, an, I made a mistake, an is siesa. I saw a woman talking to your neighbor about animals. And a shoft sit. Bit kalim gorok an il hayawanet about animals. Allahu Akbar. Yes. Hmm. So if you can hear this, this is the call to prayer called Aden and uh, there are five of those every day if you don't know uh, do all Egyptians understand Fosha? yes they do they do understand but it depends on them also it depends on their education if someone's uneducated then maybe they wouldn't but I think everybody educated or not won't be able to answer you right away. Okay, so we will we will have to think before speaking. Okay. Time to pray. Yes, it's time for the uh, uh, Maghrib, which is sunset. It's the, yeah, sunset. Uh, what the Salah? Yes. <laughs> Could you conjugate in present and past the verb to travel? Yeah, safer, 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 and a safer, safer. It's the same. And a safer, 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 and أنا سافرت أنت سافرت أنت سافرتي أنت سافرتوا هو سافر هي سافرت إحنا سافرنا أنت سافرتوا. It's very easy. It's a very easy word, verb. So yes, I posted a podcast about two days ago, and in this podcast I introduced myself in Egyptian Arabic. I spoke really slowly. And in the description below, you can see what I said uh, so that you can listen and read along. Um, and also I wrote the translation. So I think this is really, really good for you. What is the meaning of inta bitish bitash tageni? Ah. أنت بتشتغلني. أنت بتشتغلني. This means are you're working me. It, it, this is the literal translation. It means are you trying to trick me? Okay. أنت بتشتغلني ولا إيه? This means are you trying to trick me or what? أنت بتشتغلني ولا إيه? Are you trying to trick me or what? أنت بتشتغلني ولا إيه? When someone, for example, just says something which is unbelievable, you can say that to them. And, uh, yeah, it's one of our... Uh, what is this? Is this Farsi? What? I, I don't know. 
this is a strange letter in between. Is this Kev also, or is it uh, something different? Hmm. Okay, so I'm back to the questions on YouTube, my comments. Shulk. Shulk. Vetishtakni. Vetishtagalni. Shulk. Hmm. Not sure what you mean. Um, the most difficult question that I get is someone who heard something and then he writes it in English letters. And I'm sure he didn't really hear it right. And then he just writes anything in English. It's very hard for me to know what you're trying to say to tell you what it means. So if you hear a word and you don't know what it means, you have to like, Show me where you heard it. Tell me where to find it, anything, or give me the Arabic writing because that way it's very hard for me to tell you. Show, aw intazar, aw hub. Ah, bitishtali, bitishtali, bitishtali means do you like miss me? In the bitishtali, this means like do you really, really miss me? Uh, Okay, so this is also a request that I received from you guys. It's, um, you tell me to like take a clip from a movie and then like explain that clip. And um, I want to do that, but I can't do it on YouTube because if I do this, uh, YouTube can, can actually ban my channel. So, if I get a clip from a, from a movie for like three minutes or something, and then I explain, the problem is with the content, which isn't mine, the movie. So I can't do that, okay? If I do that, and you, YouTube can give me a strike, and if I get three strikes, then that's it. They can ban the whole channel, and I don't want to do this to my channel, okay? So I would love to do it, but I can't do it. I could if I would if I could. The coffee is cold. Coffee is hot. Al ahwa. Al ahwa. Birdit. Al ahwa sa'a. Or barda. Al ahwa sukhna. Al ahwa sukhna. The water is cold. El maya sa'a. El maya sa'a. Water is hot. Sukhna, same thing. The soup is cold. The shorba sa'a. Soup is hot. Is shorba sukhna. Tea is shay sa'a. Shay sa'a. Now, shay is masculine. So the word is also masculine, the adjective. The tea is hot. Is shay sukhna. And then it's cold, it's hot. A go bird, go bird, ow, it go sa. Hmm, interesting. It is hot. A go hot. There's a lot of good Disney clips in Egyptian Arabic on YouTube. Huh, interesting. If it's also, um, <clears throat> If it's uh, if it has subtitles, please send me the link so that I so that I can like, give it to people who always ask me for content to watch. I appreciate it anyway. Hmm. Okay, so as I was saying, adding clips of movies in my videos, I can't do it. I actually spoke to someone from YouTube, like the people who like work. At Google, and they told me that I can't do it. Uh, hmm. Someone actually, someone else called Mimo had a question for me. An abamshi and a meshi. This is what I explained in the first five minutes. Um. Okay. What else? Hmm. Okay. So I am thinking that's it, maybe. 
Yeah, a question about the negative sandwich. Okay, so in Egyptian Arabic, there are two ways to negate a verb or an adjective. No, just a verb, not adjective, okay? Only verbs. So we have the word mish, mim sheen, mish. We can say this word before the verb, or we can take this word, which is made from two letters, Meme sheen, and then we put meme as a as a prefix, and then sheen as a suffix. So the word, so the like the verb becomes a sandwich, a negative sandwich. It's surrounded by a negative from both sides. So mish, we break it into two pieces, and then meme sheen. So mish bahib, I don't like, I don't love. We say ma bahibish. Now it's the sandwich. Okay, this is also a question because people... What's funny is that on my negative sandwich video, someone asked me, what does negative sandwich mean? Um, okay, did you watch the video? Or did you just read the title and then ask me? So I just said, you should watch the video. Um... So, someone said your English is amazing. Okay, about my English, I also get this question so much. How how did you learn English? How did you learn? I never learned English. I grew up speaking English. It's my language. Okay, I grew up when I was when I was about eight or nine months. We all moved to England, so I grew up speaking English more than Arabic, actually. So it's my first language, just like Arabic. Okay. So when people say your English is good, it's it's just like telling someone who speaks Spanish as their native language, your Spanish is good. It's okay. okay. To catch cold in Egyptian, uh, you can say anageli bert. So this, so this means the cold came for me. Okay, anageli bert. This is the literal translation. Please make video how to interact with taxi drivers in Cairo. Hmm, I think you should take an Uber. Don't take taxis. I don't. Um, if you take an Uber, it's so much better because you wouldn't have to like speak about how much you're supposed to pay or anything. And um, it's cheaper, like. For example, if you take a taxi from the airport, it's so expensive. But if you take an Uber, it's so much cheaper. Um, so I can also make a video like how to interact, how to say go right, go left. I can do that. I found a precious stone on the sand. There are pyramids on the sand of the desert. Okay. Hi, Mimo. Do you offer one-on-one -on -one lessons? Yes, I do. If so, how can I get in touch with you? Uh, you can get in touch on my Instagram. I post very small videos every day. It's called Egyptian Arabic Mimo. Uh, let me actually show you what my Instagram looks like. Uh, Egyptian Arabic Mimo. That's the name of my Instagram. And this is what my page looks like here. This is what it looks like. My Instagram page. This is my picture. You can see here my picture. Okay. So just get in touch. Send me a message. And uh, I'll give you more details about my lessons. Uh, so, yeah. أنت بتتكلم باللهجة القاهرة بلهجة القاهرة أو بلهجة تانية في مصر. Cairo. My this is this question says, do you speak with the uh, Cairo accent or another inside within Egypt? I speak the normal Cairo accent because I've always, uh, whenever I was in Egypt, I was in Cairo, so I speak the normal Cairo accent. Actually, my family, like my relatives, they don't live in Cairo. They live in a different uh, province, and they actually speak a little differently. So it's always fun for me to speak to them. I really like it. 
um, it's a little different, but it's the same language and everything. Some some words may be different, some pronunciation may be different, and uh, but overall it's the same. But I speak Ka- the Cairo accent. أنا بتكلم لهجة القاهرة. Live كل يوم ولا كل أسبوع ولا إيه. <laughs> this says, do you go live every day, every week, or what? Um, it really depends on my mood. <laughs> so um, if I'm free and I have nothing to do, I sometimes go live. But maybe if it's an if it's like a routine thing, maybe once a week. Uh, so I don't have like a specific time for it. Great, will do. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm waiting for your message. Pass me the spoon. Hmm. Pass me the fork. Pass me. How do I say pass me? We don't say pass me. I can say like, could you? We say mumkin. Mumkin. Mumkin is shoka. Mumkin il shoka. And shoka means fork. So mumkin is shoka. Like, could you? And then give me. Uh, and then the fork, like mumkin il mumkin is shoka. What's happening? Mumkin is shoka. And then you say, just say mumkin, like uh, could you? I found a precious stone on the sand. What do you mean by precious stone? Like uh, like a jewel, crystal. Uh, Mm-hmm. Who's interested in other Egyptian accents? <laughs> um, you know, of course, like any other language in any country, inside the country itself, uh, there's a bunch of different accents, of course. The most different, or the one with the biggest difference would be the southern accent. It's really, really different. Sometimes it's even hard for me to understand uh what they're saying sometimes but also it depends on exposure so if you like speak to th- southerners a lot you go there uh you have like family or relatives then of course you would be more familiar it would be easier for you to understand them so it depends on exposure and uh also another question that i had is uh do you understand Arabic dialects from every country, then no, I don't. Okay, <laughs> um, but I we un- we mostly all understand each other. But uh, people who have the French influence or countries that have this French influence, Morocco, Algeria, and Tunis, those three countries, are extremely difficult to understand. Um, but other than that, like it's 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 okay. Of course, it depends. Some people within the country may have a more difficult accent. Hi, please. Can you make one specific video about past, present, and future? It's a little bit complicated for me. I also try to learn from songs, but some songs. Uh, Yasmin, I made a video about that. I actually made two. There's a video about the present, and uh, I think I made all three. There's there's a video that I made that that compares all three of them, okay? The past and present and future. I think it's the video that says Egyptian Arabic verbs in the past. I explain the past and then I compare all three. So I'll try to go and see that video. What is what is the typical word order of Egyptian Arabic? Like English. Person, verb, object. Mm, so, for example, I play football. balab kora. I play football. The same order, okay. But something is reversed when or flipped when we say when we describe something. So you want to say big car. We say car first and then big, okay. So arabiya means car, and then big means kibira. Okay, so Arabia, Kibira, just like Spanish, if you are familiar with Spanish. 
What are differences between the Arabic spoken in Northern Asia? <laughs> okay, that's well, that's a big difference. Uh, the most, mm, like the simplest difference would be some letters are pronounced differently. For example, the letter Kof, Kof, in standard Arabic in Cairo is pronounced A. Eh. In the South, it's pronounced G. <laughs> so it's very different. So look at this. In standard, the word for heart is kalb. Ka, 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 kalb. Kalb. There. Kalb. In Cairo, we say elb. Ah, ah, elb. In the South, they say gelb. Okay. So this letter is pronounced differently in different places. Of course, it's deeper than that. They use different words, different pronunciation, like you see. Um, actually, they may even like have these like like sayings that they only they know, and um, it's really really different because it's really far away also, and they're closer to other to like the other countries' borders. So that also has an effect, I think. Um, so yeah, like I, I met someone from Yemen once or from Libya. I don't remember. I think it was, he was Libyan. And when he spoke, I thought he was Southern Egyptian, but, uh, I found out that he was Libyan. So it, it did sound similar to me, to my ears, but maybe to someone else's it's, it isn't the same, but it did sound like someone from the South speaking. So the differences, they're big. You know, if someone who learns Arabic can understand <laughs> the, the accents in Cairo and in the South, then that's, that's just amazing. Uh, okay, I'm about to end my session. Please, if you have any questions, ask me right now, quickly, 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 before I end my session. How do you say thank you for answering my questions in Egyptian Arabic? Shukran. Uh, hmm. Thank you for answering my questions. Just we, we just say thank you. Shukran ala igabit ah. Shukran ala igabit is soel. Shukran ala igabit soeli. There. Please let's let this live saved. Yeah, on YouTube, it's always saved, not on Insta. I don't use Instagram for live anymore because I can't save it. I don't know how to do it. it just doesn't let me. Ashkurak. Yes, it's going to be saved. Don't worry. What are differences? Okay, I answered this. If I didn't answer your question, please try to like uh, do it, like write it again. I found a precious stone. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, I think I answered all your questions. I think so. I hope so. Uh, all right, that's it. I will see you again, hopefully, maybe next week. Maybe, depends. And um, thank you very much for watching. Shukran ala mutabaitku wa hashufku al marra If you understood what I said, good job. Goodbye. Ma'asalamu.